friends, Monaco here and Milks. We are starting our third unit of the year. We're starting to pick up the pace here, um, so expect a lot more quicker. Uh, we're talking about periodic table, so we're talking about the second page in our pack. We're going to learn about how the periodic table has evolved and the key scientists associated with these changes to the periodic table. And remember, you should be doing these ahead of time. Seriously. Way too many students turning them in. Uh, the last day of the unit, or oh, didn't finish yet. Well, what, yeah. what use was it? Right. If or you even do it ahead. Or, or even worse, I'm done with the test, Mister. Can I finish my homework now? Oh my gosh. Do it ahead of time. Seriously. You will be that much more successful in our class. And that's what it's designed for. Yeah. So Mendeleev was the first guy to come up with the periodic table. Um, he took all the elements and made them in a usable manner. Legend says that he loves playing, loved playing solitaire, and he put all the elements on cards and arranged them. He arranged the elements according to their atomic masses, the best we knew. At the time, the proton wasn't known, so he just knew how the elements weighed relative to each other. So right. he arranged it out to make a grid. Perfect. Um, the really cool thing that he did that nobody had done before was he, s he left blank spots. And so the periodic table seemed to be out of order. His blank spots, he predicted the exist, and what he did, he predicted the existence of elements that should fill in those blank spots, which is why he was kind of the big deal. Right, and if you look from like, and this third row down, or fourth row down, you see K and potassium and calcium, and their weight difference isn't that big, but there's a big gap between C, C A and T I. Yeah. So he, he's got to figure, he kind of figured that something belongs there, I just don't know what it is yet. So that was his claim to fame. He first arranged a periodic table, and um, it resulted in the first usable tables, I guess. But it was not good enough yet. No, in mean, gaps in science, it, that I just is like begging it, right? me to fix it. It's like I got blanks in my practice packet. Right. I'm grinding my teeth over here. Right, right, right. Um, so this dude, Henry Mosley, an actual British chemist, um, used some X-ray spectra. So we did spectra of uh, elements. He used X-ray spectra of the elements. And he helped discover the existence of the proton, which is kind of a big deal. True, true. I mean, that's where, you know, the, the, the protons are king, is what I say. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, the periodic table, the one we use nowadays, all based, based on the proton. And thanks to Mosley. Yeah. Um, so he set up his table instead of by atomic mass, but by atomic number. So instead of like 47 and a quarter, 49.35, it was like 1, 2, 3, 4. Much five, easier six, to, seven, to add on. Exactly. Next. Much more. Right. And so this is now how the modern day periodic table is arranged. So the one we're going to be using, you'll see, goes in succession by the number of protons. If you were to start with the simplest atom, you'd have one proton, and the next atom, you know, two. Makes sense. And beautifully, now there's no more gaps. Also, there's no more gaps because he did this about 20 years after Mendeleev, and those ones that Mendeleev hadn't been discovered yet had been discovered. True. And they fit in. True, so, and, it's, and it's also based on a little bit more sound of a whole number system, which makes it more easy. Yeah. makes it easier to predict. And when we get into prediction, now we're going to talk about periodic law. So Mendeleev arranged it in the periodic table. Mosley discovered the periodic law. And because of his arrangement, he started to notice not just the pattern of one, two, three, four, five protons. If the way you arrange it, there could be two or three different levels of dimensionality, so to speak. So he said the periodic law is the periodic functions of the atomic number. So elements behave a certain way because of how many protons they've got. Sure. I know it's today that's like no-brainer milks, no-brainer right. Monaco, but... Right, well, let's break down this word periodic a little bit because we don't hear it a lot anymore because right. I mean, when we were growing up, periodicals were, you know, a big deal. Like mm -hmm. the weekly and Saturday evening post kind of thing. Right, like Not weekly that magazines, but, you know, <laughs> but still, yeah. periodicals, I mean, and they come out weekly. And very and scheduled, and you can very much you predict and get what's your entertainment happen. week, entertainment weekly. And there you, you go, weekly. Week. It's a magazine, so sure. every Monday you knew that something was coming out. Every uh -huh. Tuesday it was this. Every we Wednesday used to have the TV that. guide. Yep. It used to come in paper Reader's versions. Digest. Yeah, to see yeah. what was coming up on the TV. Those are periodic. either way. They're periodic. They come out every month or week or whatever, right. and so that's what the word periodic is based on. Right. So as we move down a group or column, we're going to add one principal energy level or one shell of electrons. 
in class, I like to think of it as another layer of co clothes sometimes. Yeah. Um, also, that's, we got some practice with that when we were doing Bohr diagrams. We right. realized, oh, wow, if it's got three numbers in this sequence, it must have three shells of electrons. Here we go. And, this is, and we're gonna it's keep in period it. three of the periodic table. Here we go. Um, as you move across a row or a period, you add one proton to the nucleus and one electron to the balanced shell. So some of us also noted the pattern that every step you take towards the noble gases, the group 18, the end, the right-hand side of the periodic table, there's one more proton, one more electron in each element. Mosley did it on purpose that way because sure. it made sense. Right. But he did it based on protons again, and it just so happens electrons follow. Protons are For key. neutral atoms. Most. Right. Yes. Yeah. Electrons follow. Okay. So the maximum number of valence electrons any element can have is eight. You'll hear us say eight is great, or octet. Octet, we will talk about the octet rule. Mm -hmm. But you're going to hear this about eight more times. That It's going to be very important for us to know that eight is the number of valence electrons we're looking for. I'm not so sure that was Mosley's idea, but it so worked. It happened to work out that way. The After period, he right. arranged the periodic table, he said, wow, look at everything in group 18 has eight valence electrons, right. with one exception. We'll get to it. All elements in the same column or group have the same number of valence electrons. Therefore, elements in the same column or group tend to have similar chemical properties. He did arrange it this way intentionally, I think. I, probably. I mean, and it's very common. We're, we're going to learn the names in the next few videos. Yeah. But if you look at all those yellow ones on the left here, lithium, sodium, potassium, potassium they all have one very common major property, right? You throw them in water and... Boom. Boom, boom. So Mosley and all the other chemists at the time knew about similar elements acting similarly, or elements acting similarly. So after Mosley figured out his periodic law and looked at it, he says, well, well, why don't I take all those elements that behave the same way and group them together? Right. And just so happened that he came out with this awesome two-dimensional arrangement of the periodic table. Right. It's really neat how it's grouped, you know, from left to right horizontally, but and it's also grouped Top to bottom, yeah. And it, it, there's so much now hidden information in here that yeah. we just got to learn to decode it. And we're That's gonna, one of the hardest parts about being a chemist, decoding right. the periodic and then we're going to be on, you know, we'll be done with the unit because this whole unit is this table. Periodic table. And we've already got a good flavor. So know the difference between Mendeleev and Mosley. Understand periodic law. Pretty simple video yep. here. If you go look in on your periodic computer or whatever, you're going to find a billion different versions of the periodic table. Um, and that's great. Find one you like, but you got to know how to use R1, Regents 1 yeah, for our seriously. class. So seriously, I know definitely you don't might get not confused. like it, but that's the one we have to use on our tests and quizzes. Yeah. So there is it. actually, just as a heads up, uh, the practice right after this, mm -hmm. um, it's got the atomic number in the top right-hand corner. Weird so there spot. you go. Right. And if, if oh, you I look, guess the, the moral of that story is always pay attention to the key. Seriously. Because the numbers will move around all over they, the place. They if can if you're getting your own periodic table. Right. You don't really know. Lost it, left it at home. Let me Google one real quick. Yep. Pay attention to the key, otherwise you're not going to keep it right. Okay, see you Thanks. guys. Thanks for watching.